Thank you, Mr. Corellison. Unfortunately, I might not have the secrets of the universe for you all, but I'm doing my best. So I'd like to start off with a riddle. So you all can put your thinking caps on. What is very small is part of our daily lives, has created conflicts throughout history, and is necessary for our salvation. Does anybody have a guess? All right, I've got a few more hints. It's mentioned 47 times in the Bible. It is in all of our kitchens. It's the name of a movie starring Angelina Jolie. And it was the last thing that Lot's wife tasted. Sen there we go, salt, thank you. <laughs> I was nervous for a second, nobody would get it. <laughs> yes, it's salt. Today I'm gonna to be discussing what it means to be spiritually salty and how we can apply that into our daily lives. So to understand this concept more fully, let's start off by defining salt. The word for salt that's most used in the New Testament is halas, H-A-L-A-S, and it is often used in the context of religion as a symbol of endurance and worth. In the Old Testament, salt was a requirement for sacrifices in the New Testament, Christ describes how his disciples need to be seasoned with salt, which denoted moral worth or speech. So what else do we know about salt? It's commonly used in most kitchens in the United States, as well as overseas. Throughout history, many wars have been fought over salt, specifically the Salt War of 1540 between the Papal States and the city of Perugia. But the main thing that I want you all to understand about salt is that it's a flavor enhancer. Salt does not actually provide its own flavor. Salt, when used in appropriate amounts, doesn't add flavor to food. Instead, it breaks down the cell walls in the foods we eat and releases the natural flavor that's trapped inside. Therefore, when something's seasoned with salt, more of its natural flavor is released. This understanding gives us context to the requirement laid out in the scripture of being the salt of the earth, which we'll be reading shortly. Given this knowledge, to truly be salty, we would need to use our righteousness to enhance the world around us like salt enhances the flavor of the food that we eat. So let's start in Matthew. If you could all turn to Matthew 5, we'll read in verse 13. Again, that's Matthew 5, starting in verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Is it, then, it is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So how well does this light on a hill analogy parallel with the flavor enhancing nature of salt? Our good works have to enhance the world around us to glorify God, and that is how to be that city on a hill. These seemingly different ideas of light and salt are actually discussing the same topic. The command to be salty is given, then Matthew follows up and explains the concept he's trying to get across. That to be salty, we need to be a light on a hill. Being that light on a hill enables us to enhance the world around us with godly flavor and righteous salt. So how do we have this righteous salt? Or should we call it kosher salt? What is the application? Let's turn to an example in the Bible of someone who was salty. Someone who was well seasoned and enhanced the world around them with the light of God. This is someone who is a light on a hill in their community, which enabled God to work through them to significantly grow the church. So let's turn to Acts, verse, or Acts chapter 9. We'll start in verse 36. We're going to read the story of Tabitha, or Dorcas. This is a woman who enhanced the world around her with her righteous salt. 
So again, we're starting in Acts 9, verse 36. At Joppa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, who, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable in the deeds and charitable deeds which she did. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. And since Lydda was near Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent two men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. Then Peter arose and went to, with them. When they had come, he had brought him into, they had brought him into the upper room. And all the widows stood by him weeping, showing the tunics and garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. But Peter put them all out and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. Then he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all of Joppa, and many believed on the Lord. So it was that he stayed many days in Joppa with Simon a tanner. So Dorcas enhanced the lives of others with godly flavor by making, widow, making clothes for the widows of Joppa. Joppa was a port city and could have easily had a relatively large number of widows or households with a single woman due to the dangerous nature of seafaring at the time. Men could have been killed at sea, lost, or just out on a long voyage. Dorcas capitalized on this and found a way that she could contribute within her community and provide a physical service for those around her. By doing this, Dorcas made herself known and respected through her godly acts of service, which we can clearly see by the story of her death. All the widows who she had made coats for were in the room with her. She embodied this saltiness that's commanded in Matthew 5 and became that light on a hill, making the lives of those around her better and displaying God's way of life to her community. <laughs> like Dorcas, we can use our salt and enhance the world around us with simple acts of service. Dorcas was a disciple of God and her light shined through her acts of service. Well, there are an infinite number of ways to spread the word of God. The most, one of the most direct and immediate ways we can enhance the world around us is by making it a better place with simple physical acts of service and works of charity. Maybe this is helping a new neighbor move in or volunteering at your local community center. For sake of time, I won't be going through an exhaustive list of ways to help your community. I'm sure we could all think of a few. But any way we can help others puts on display, uses that saltiness and shows the light of God. These simple acts not only allow us to use our salt, but they also give God the opportunity to multiply those acts and use us to grow his church. And we can do that if we're involved in the community like Dorcas was. Dorcas is the only woman in the Bible to be referred to as a disciple. For her to get that title, she must have been a woman of great faith. This combined with the salty works that she did for her community enabled God to use her to significantly grow his church in that city, in Joppa. Dorcas was so salty that even her death spread the gospel and enhanced the people around her. When she died, God performed a miracle through Peter and brought her back to life. This act caused many to become Christians and enhanced the whole community of Joppa with godly salt. It was the fact that Dorcas was salty that provided the opportunity for God to work through her in the way that he did. If Dorcas had lived a life of a recluse or was relatively unknown in her community, then the miracle that God performed would have been relatively insignificant to the people of Joppa. Today we have learned that Salt is a lot more than just an ordinary spice. It is a flavor enhancer. So to be truly salty, we need to enhance the world around us with godly flavor. We read about how Dorcas enhanced her community by simple acts of charity, which gave God the opportunity to glorify himself in her death. When a light on a hill 
is extinguished, people notice. When it burns brighter, people notice. When it flickers, people notice. And when people notice, God can work miracles. So be salty and find simple little ways to enhance the world around you with godly flavor. Remember, be salty like Dorcas, not like Lot's wife.